Hello everyone and my name is Barak Attal and I'd like to welcome everyone to Clear Blocks to Developing Your Psychic Vision. And we're going to do a seven week process where we're going to clear any blocks that we may have that stop us from using our intuition and our psychic ability. And there's a bit of a side note in that in the process, there may, may be some of you that will actually improve their physical eyesight. So there's sort of all that is going to be sort of tied up over the next seven weeks that we journey on this together. Uh, it's such an important topic. I've invited Holly to join us. Welcome, Holly. And uh, Holly is uh, an amazing person in her own right, and we're really honoured to have her with us. Uh, Holly, do you just want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hello, everybody. I think I was muted a minute ago. Um, so I call myself a transformational catalyst, have uh, done a lot of work in the transformational arena for the last 35 plus years. Um, I work mostly with innovators and visionaries and entrepreneurs as a master coach and purpose guide. And I also build purpose aligned systems, but I've spent many years developing my own psychic and intuitive capacities so that I could live into my highest potential and help guide others into the same and profit from their own higher purpose, from your own higher purpose. So really happy to be here with you all and love Barry and have worked with him for a couple of years. So i um, delighted to be here as well. Thanks, Holly. It's just wonderful. And it's going to slip back here. Now, what, what I want to do is, oh, just for myself, those who don't know me, I've been doing intuitive kinesiology now for uh, 25 years. It's actually worked out to be. And what we're going to be doing today is identifying any blocks that you have. And I've developed a technique that we can actually clear that for everyone live on the call. And more importantly, everyone who's actually listening to the replay will actually get to shift some of the energy. Some of you may feel that, some of you may not. It doesn't really matter. And some of you may even decide that you want to go back over the replay to get the full benefit of it. But it is a process where we get to look at what are those blocks that stop us from having those abilities. And over the seven weeks, we loosely sort of use the chakra approach. So today, we're going to be looking at all those sort of tribal and family aspects associated with what's stopping us from actually having a, a really great intuition and a really great psychic ability. And I just want to start with what's the difference between the two because there is actually a difference. And the way I see it, I see our intuition is almost like a, a gut response. It's an internal process. You know, my intuition says, I feel like I need to do this. Whereas a psychic ability is the ability to read another person. You know, we could talk about reading their aura, their etheric field, or their, you know, just their, their body language, whatever's going on. And we sort of get a sense of what's happening for them. And one of the things I've recognised is a lot of our psychic ability is thrown out because it's considered to be a bit woo-woo or, or those sorts of things. So we don't get a real chance of using it. In actual fact, I've just measured the frequency because I like measuring the frequency of the group so we can see how we're going each week. And the frequency of this particular group is 45%. Wow. Of all those people enrolled. Now, it's, it's not bad, but it's not quite even over the 50-50. And I believe the reason for that is we're just told so often that it's not okay to use our psychic ability. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be working interactively with each other. So this is not going to be just a talk fest. Uh, we're going to have Holly up doing some actual practical, practical activities for you to develop your psychic ability. So that's going to be pretty exciting as well. And I'm really looking forward to that part of it. But let's get straight into it. And the key statement over the next seven weeks I want us to clear is simply a statement that says, I am psychic. And when I test that, actual fact, no one really fully take, has taken that on in the group. So, you know, nice, simple key statement, but the key statement for overall is one that just says, I am psychic. So we're going to build up a whole processes so that by the end of the seven weeks, you get to actually believe that for yourself. All right, let's get started. And we're going to actually invite someone in 
and uh, we're going to invite uh, Jeremiah, we're going to invite you in to start with. Welcome. You just need to unmute yourself, Jeremiah, and just to let people know if you're speaking, make sure you unmute yourself. If you're not speaking, please mute yourself. It keeps the bad width and stops the dogs barking in the background and things like that. So, Wolf, Wolf, Jeremiah, Wolf. welcome to the call. Thank you, Barry. You've got our very first statement for this particular course. And the statement I want you to say, we're going to test it for you. We're going to clear it for you with the intent of clearing it for the whole group. And the statement I've got for you is, um, I have a natural psychic ability. Can you I have a natural psychic ability. Okay. So that's actually coming up as a stress. Do you, any ideas why? Oh, because of, of all the work I've done, I, I've never really, um, um, I've been at programs before in rooms where other people are seeing little angels flying about, etc. and I never do. So I, I guess my, I have some uh, doubt in my intuitive and psychic ability. Okay. So I guess what I'm hearing you say is that's partly dependent on how you're getting the information. You know, people are seeing something and I'm not seeing it, therefore I mustn't be psychic. I don't, I don't think I'm not psychic. I just think there's some blockage there that uh, I guess I have the gift. It's just well hidden. Yep, yep. And I guess the first thing we're doing, why this has come up as a first statement, is to recognise that you do have the gift because even that is a stress. Yep. Because after a while you think, oh, well, maybe I don't have this gift. Yeah. And I believe a natural psychic ability is something that everyone has, you know. And you know, it's like we can all sing, but some people are better singers than others. So we all have different levels of ability. Doesn't mean that no one can sing. We can all sing to some degree. Does that make sense? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So uh, does anyone else want to comment on that for themselves? It's a really important one, the one we're starting with. If you are, happy for you to jump on. Uh, it's I have a natural psychic ability because it's the first one. I really want to make sure we get this one. Yeah, I get that too. Uh, exactly as uh, Jeremiah said, um, other people have seen brightly coloured auras or um, I, as a youth used to go to spiritualist church. I never got the bloody reading. Uh, <laughs> Gave up. So yeah. You weren't talking I, I, in tongues. <laughs> no, not talking in tongues. No, no. Always the person next to me. Every time the person next to me would get a reading. Never me. <laughs> At the end, I concluded I was the conduit. But yeah, it was, it's like. <laughs> but you know, as I think about it, well, I can draw stick figures pretty good, but I can't do an oil <laughs> masterpiece. It doesn't sure. take away from that I have got abilities. Okay. So I just want people to recognise within yourself that you do have a natural psychic ability, and that's what I'm after. So just, just really quickly, Barry, um, I, I did a, um, a year-long course, creative course, um, Magician's Way course, and two of the people got up. One was a doctor and one was a corporate banker. They both got up because we had to say what our um, you know, what we were going to create. And they both got up and said, we, we can only draw stick people, and we're, but we're going to be fine artists. And the first paintings they did could have hung in any art gallery anywhere around the world. So we have, the, uh, so I have the belief that I have it there, as they had that belief. You know, they can only do stick people, but they turned out masterpieces and have continued to do so. So I believe it's there. It's just, yeah, it's sort of um, a little bit hidden. Okay. So let's clear that now. We're going to actually clear that for the group. And as I clear this, just be aware of what's happening within your own body. And one of the things I recognise when I clear this, it gives me an indication of what's going on. And what's actually happening is this is not something, even though we're looking at family and how family has influenced us and our community has influenced us, the belief that we don't have a natural psychic ability hasn't come from outside. It's within ourselves. We've made that up ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, Jeremiah, I'm going to get you to say again, I have a natural psychic ability. I have a natural psychic ability. Okay. How does that feel now? Yeah, that feels yeah, better. It does feel better. It's actually holding it. People listen to it. There's a difference in, in how he's actually saying that. Mm -hmm. Right, Caroline, I just want to check with you as well if you're there. 
and she may not be there. So, yep, she's snaking. Oh, I've got leg pain. I'm wriggling a lot this morning. Okay. Uh, you just say for natural psychic ability. I have a natural psychic ability. Okay, good. Let's hold. Can you hear the difference in that? Not sure. Okay. Yep, and that's okay. I thought it was a stress no. in the first place. All right. Um, it is actually holy, and I, I think the key is that there's more of a belief there around that, and that's what we're after. All right, well done, everyone. That's our first one, so it's not too bad. Um, the recognize yourself if there's any changes, and, and feel free to you know, put it in the you know, chat room if you know, changes that you do notice for yourself and things like that. Okay, the second one, and we're going to get um, we're going to get someone else on for this, and we're going to go to um, Nicole. We're going to come to you if you're there. And Nicole might have a slight. I'm here. Barley, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit, little bit dodgy this morning, but we'll be okay. right. I'll just get you to say the statement. The statement I've or got not. for you, it yeah. is safe for me to be psychic. It is safe for me to be psychic. Yeah, it's coming up as a stress. So can, do you see that sometimes like you can be a little bit of afraid about it, even having a psychic ability, let alone using it? Uh yeah, possibly. And I think it's that doubt too, like, is that psychic or is, you know, that just me, the voices in my head, you know, yeah. that sort of thing, I suppose, is what I, I grew up with. So Yeah. And so the, start questioning yourself, is this psychic or is this just me? Is this my intuition or am I just making this whole thing up? And Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just... I, I want to answer that now because I think that's a really great question. It's really pivotal for what we're going to be doing over the next seven weeks. And the way that I look at it is sometimes I could be journaling and I can write down, I get this information, I start writing it down. When I look back on it, for me, rather than, is this coming from my higher self? Is this a psychic ability? Is this just intuitive? Is this whatever? Am I making this whole thing up? And I want, to want us to recognise that part of us is in the picture. So we are there. So part of it, yes, we are making this up because we're there. We're the filter. And we have to own that. Right? What I think is more important is yeah. the information that's coming through serving us. Does it help us? So if the information coming through really supports me, I got terrific. And generally, is the information coming through being positive? Because my belief is that if we're you know, really getting psychic ability and it says uh, so-and-so is no good and they're not a really nice person and all this sort of stuff, then I actually question whether that's my higher self or is it just me having a bad day going, oh, I'm just having an argument with this person, it's their fault. So I just want to recognise that it... I find it much safer to be using my psychic ability when I'm not attached to those sort of questions. Like, where is this coming from? I've got a double blind study there, so I've got to do all of this. And just learning over a period of time to trust that the information coming through is what's important. Jane, can I put you on for a second? Because I know this is something that you have looked at and, and I think you've done really successful in moving forward. Do you just want to answer that for yourself? Like, how do you answer that thing about doubt and psychic ability? Um, well, I just um, really, really had to trust. That's the main thing, to really trust that what information I'm getting is correct because I was always second guessing. I was getting the right information, but I was always not trusting it. It's about trust. Yeah. yeah. And I think really we're going to be doing a lot of stuff here around trust. Um, Holly, did you want to comment on that as well? It's a really important statement. You know, I tend to think that I'm safer when I listen to what comes in from where, from whence it comes, um, more than my own thoughts or ego. Um, and so generally I tend to value 
those things that I wouldn't have come up with myself. And I, you can usually tell it's either intuition or a psychic knowing if it's something that I wouldn't have come up with. It wasn't my original thought. Um, and usually those, it's pretty evident, like I wouldn't have thought about that. So it couldn't be just my ego. <laughs> so it feels safe to trust when I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have originated from me. Yep. No, really good point. And uh, so Nicole, we're going to come back to you. We're going to clear this one here for you and for the group. And can you say it is safe for me to be psychic? It is safe for me to be psychic. That's how I feel now. Has it eased off a little bit in terms of... Uh, you know, a eight, lot better. Eight. I could yeah. feel that. It felt quite central. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be looking at that more detailed as we go on in probably weeks two and three in particular. But, you know, to it's really... Breaking up, up to, to the reception that. here. But I did... Um... What was that, sorry? A slightly bad connection there from Bali, but never mind. Look, yes, he's <laughs> back. All right, look, I'm really pleased that's holding for you. So, thank you. It's a really good one. All thank right. you. Okay, um, I'm just wondering if there's anyone there who hasn't spoken who's had a situation where they haven't been never been encouraged to use their intuition or have a psychic ability, you know, it just wasn't in. If they ever did that, they'll told they'll just making it up or whatever. Is anyone in that situation? Just come on and say, um, Lisa. Um, yeah. Well, when I was six, my brother died and he came and visited me because they'd had the funeral and nobody told me. Yeah. And so when I told my mother that he'd been to see me, um, I was told what a lot of rubbish. And if, if he'd come back to see anybody, she, he'd have gone to see her. So, um, yeah, after that, I was like, told that I couldn't see anything, um, but I could. I mean, I did, and also I've seen some pretty things I don't want to see, and so I think I've shut my visual side of things down. Sure. More sure. than my audio. Mm. Okay. So the statement I've got for you is, it is safe for others to see me as psychic. <laughs> okay, yeah, at that point too. <laughs> I can tell I mean, by the laughter that's already a stress, but we'll get you to say it. I want to test it. Um, it is safe for others to see me as psychic. Yeah, okay. And so that, that can be even more scary sometimes than even than recognising your own abilities is that allowing other people to say that to you. I don't think people do seem... I mean, I haven't got the greatest of ability, but I do have someone and people don't see it. Okay. I, I just want to let you know, because I know you, I actually do see you as psychic, so I have no problems with that. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> so, so there is but one the, up there. But the so. visual side of it, I have definitely shut down. Okay. And mm. so we're going to be looking at developing all those aspects, but, you know, the visual side is only one aspect of being psychic. Yeah. You know, most people being psychic, they get a feeling, they get a sense, they get a, you know, almost an intuitive knowing that will come into it. Okay. You know, some people hear things, some people see things, some, you know, there's a whole range of possibilities. All right. But this has actually got to do, a lot of this has got to do with everyone with your upbringing, by the way, where there's an upbringing where it just simply wasn't encouraged. And if you did say anything like that, like Lisa said, it was like, oh, don't be silly. And as an upbringing, then we, we tend to shut those sorts of things down. Um, one of the things that I've actually found just recently, which is really interesting, not only do we have our whole childhood aspects of shutting down our psychic abilities by other people, but when we're in our mid-20s, that also happens again. And we're going to be looking at that specifically over the course of the seven weeks as well. It did. So, you know, really interesting time. So, you know, think about over the next few weeks, what was happening in your mid to late 20s? that closed it down. And part of it is we're just busy. You know, we've, we've got family, work responsibilities, uh, you know, change of whole lifestyle sort of approach. So we're going to be looking at that as well. Does anyone else want to comment on that? It is safe for others to see me as psychic, just before we clear it. Does anyone else want to add to that? 
Um, I, I don't, which means that I do. <laughs> now, what does that mean? Uh, it, it, it means that um, I, I, I resonate with, um, as, as a kid, um, you know, re understanding or recognising I had some psychic ability, um, but I didn't recognise it. And, um, and the social and family environment I was in didn't allow me to, uh, I guess, flex that muscle or, or, or be in touch with it or, uh, you know, believe in it. And, um, and so my, my sense right now is I don't want to talk about this because um, it's, it's not there. Um, but the fact that I feel that way means that I need to talk about it to, to put it out there. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's... <laughs> that's that's what's coming up, mate. Well, that's a really good. I mean, it's actually like a muscle that we develop, you know, and, and we can learn. It's a skill that we simply learn and develop. Mm. And one of the things we're trying to clear in this one is to let go of all the old past, what other people think, to really making up our own mind of what we want to do now. So um, we're just going to clear this for everyone. And. Um, this is actually, from a clearing viewpoint, this is actually bigger than the other two. I, I didn't think this was going to be as big. But this has had more of an impact than recognising your own natural ability or being safe to be psychic. That this, the influences, and there actually are influences coming in, shutting us down. Particularly from childhood. That's the ones we're looking at here at the moment. All right? And it'd sort of be interesting because I, I'm sort of getting, even where people had supportive parents or some supportive influence in their life with their psychic ability, there were still outside influences than that, whether it was your peers, your teachers or whatever, that it wasn't a natural thing that you could just publicly talk about. All right? You know, we, we talk about all our other senses, you know, what's wrong with our psychic ability just being a natural sense that we have. All right. So, Justin, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to get you to say that statement. Can you say, it is safe for others to see me as psychic? It is safe for others to see me as psychic. Okay, how's that sound, saying it this time? Um, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still sensing it here, so I'm, um, so I'm not totally with it yet. Yep, no, that's okay. And sometimes this, you know, what happens sometimes we clear the energy side of this, uh, but our mind's still playing the story. Mm. And so recognise that story may be still going there. And just, just allow that. Don't push it. Don't try to do anything with it. Just allow that. Just recognise that some of the old story is being played and just let yep. that go very gradually. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well done. That's actually holding really well. Well done. Um, Lisa, we'll come back to you and I'll get you to say it again as well, please. It is safe for others to see me as psychic. It is safe for others to see me as psychic. Okay, awesome. How's that feel for you? Yeah, it feels good. It's something I want, just as time as you want to. <laughs> I want to be able to give advice or whatever is coming through. Okay. So I'm going to hand this over to you at this point. I've got one more to do, but I thought be, this is a really good time. I'd love to get your comments on those statements that we've had, um, and I'm going to let you do the activity that you're going to do. Um, Barry, I was thinking this was perfect time too. Um, and of course, there's synchronicity in, in, our, in our everything that we experience in life. And so the activity that I wanted to do today really is about getting to the underlying beliefs that cause us to shut down and not allow our psychic abilities, you know, among many other things that we do in life. But um, being who we really are in our, our highest way, our most expressive way, which would include our psychic capacity. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do an, a, a procedure. I'm also an energy master energy healer and um, I'm going to do a procedure that actually allows us to examine some of the childhood beliefs that keep us shut down. And so we just worked through that statement. It's, it, it is safe for others to see me as psychic. And there is an underlying belief in you that's keeping you from developing your psychic ability. So even if we release the energy, there's, there's still an underlying belief that may be bringing back that blockage. So um, you probably know that as a child, you learned that other people's expectations of you were a really critical part of surviving in your, in your childhood, your family and your peers and your extended family or, and uh, sort of your, 
organic network. And we were often told how it is, right, by our parents or other adults in our lives or teachers or our religious people, our relatives. Most of us experienced that other people had agendas for us. So we became locked in the belief systems that were a part of our natural context or our family or environment. And you may know if you've done any psychological work, that's called an introject, meaning that someone placed their own belief in you. And then it created a, a belief system um, in you that you've been carrying around most of your life. So these agendas or expectations can be anything. They can be about how we feel safe or you know, how we're gonna be successful or what makes us healthy or how we fit in or are happy. And as children, we often, no matter what was going on in your family, we often want to be like the people who are our models and our protectors, um, you know, the people who love us. And so we are happy to take on their agendas and their expectations about how life is. And um, that may have shown up in your life as you know, a statement like, well, we do it this way in our family or in our community, we hold these beliefs or these values, or um, I know that when we go out in public, we always look, you know, we always look pretty or handsome, or we are the smartest ones in the classroom. I'm curious if any of you want to share a couple of beliefs that are rolling around in your head that, that, might, that might sound familiar to you related to any of these ideas. Anybody want to throw something out popcorn style? The biggest one for me, Holly, was as a child, I was just making it all up. You know, like that was constant. Right. You're making it up. And especially, you know, related to your psychic abilities, that would be a, a very common one. You know, if you have visions or some kind of clairvoyance, you're just making it up. I, I was told that a lot too. Um, so, you, so most of us, many of us who've done a lot of personal spiritual development work have worked a lot on these limiting beliefs. I know I have like hundreds of them, right? And it always seems that no matter how much work we do, they come back. There's another layer. And then we re-experience the limitation related to that belief. And partly that's because we haven't actually cleared the underlying mental impression of a belief in our psyche even if we do clear the energetic of it. So both of those things, both the energetic quality and the mental impression of these beliefs need to be cleared as we're doing this work. So these agendas, and I call them hidden agendas, can feel in you like a, hence, a heavy or a dense or a stuck energy. And you might even feel it like a physical ailment or a discomfort. Many of us feel these kinds of things in our solar plexus or other places in our bodies. But in essence, these hidden agendas are stuck in the layers of our human energy structure. So what do I mean by human energy structure? You, you probably know that you have a subtle structure, right? And you've heard it talked about as an aura and your human energy structure is actually got this very specific anatomy and one of the parts of your anatomy are, are your layers and you have eight layers in your body. And I'm not going to tell you a whole lot more about it than that, but the specific layer we're going to work on today to bring out, to clear a hidden agenda, agenda related to your family or your community is in your primal layer. And the primal layer hidden agenda that's stuck in your human energy structure is something about someone merging their belief into your human electromagnetic field. And that hidden agenda in your primal layer is about someone else's sense of right reality. So what I want us to do is come to some awareness of what that belief about right reality is in you. And then collectively, we're going to clear it. And so we'll be able to clear everybody's right reality hidden agenda who's in the classroom today and also anybody who's listening to the recording. So what I want you to do is get settled in your chair or standing wherever you are and close your eyes and think about what belief may have been instilled in you or interjected into you in your childhood that someone may have shared with you about doing things the right way or being the right way. 
So you can think back about a religious belief or a way of being in your family that was expected or maybe at your school or your community may have had to do with a moral issue or a particular way your family expected you to behave. So does everybody have something? Look at hands, anybody? If you don't have something, raise your hand. Well, some of you are on the phone. All right, so um, it could also be, you may have heard it, we do it this way in our family. Or in our community, we value these things. Or you might have heard it, you know, they don't do X, Y, and Z like we do. So it would have been a belief that you inherited from your family or your tribe or your community. So just feel into that. I, I, I want you to. Sorry, Holly, I can't find one that I remember is imprinted on me, but my psychic ability is blocked. My father had a strong psychic ability, but it, to me, he didn't do anything with it. So in my family, it was almost like that. It, what use is that? Mm -hmm. It didn't help the family. It didn't help anybody around him in our lives. And, and that, but that's imprinted on by myself. So it's not, it's not really the primal layer. Well, no, you're, so the statement could be something like, we don't need that kind of gift. It's not useful to us. Yeah. You know, you might have heard, we depend on hard work and effort, or we're hard workers, you know, which would have precluded the need for something like psychic ability, which might have made your life a lot easier, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it does, go ahead, somebody else. No, if you're still doing, uh, Aline, go, go ahead, otherwise I'll... I'll keep thinking through it, thanks. Uh -huh. You're welcome. I've got one um, uh, which is from my father, which was around um, uh, work hard, um, save your money, um, and when you retire, you can have a good time. Uh -huh. and, and he he was very driven, um, um, and and that's the path I, I looked up to and I wanted to follow, and, and I did. And so I was very driven, you know, uh, very hard worker. Um, and um, and I and, I, and it sort of came out when my two children said to me, "Dad, we never see you smile." Mm -hmm. And 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 I, I was going through separation and a whole whole range of things. Um, and I because I just didn't know what I didn't know at at, at, at the time. So that that for me plays out a lot. I'm aware of it now, and 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 I and I live every day and enjoy it. But th that was for me was the the main message that came through from my father to be successful mm -hmm. and to drive that hard. Um, and, and, and don't worry about having fun on the way, which I kind of translate to um, don't inquire about other things, do it my way. So, you know, we keep our head down and focus and work hard. And it's, it's, it might be a little hard to imagine how that affects your psychic ability. But if you're depending primarily on efforting in the material world, mm. that's what we do. And we're known for that and we are rewarded for that in some way it's it's much harder to imagine that there are other ways of being in the world that would allow your extra gifts or your extra capacities to come in yeah so thanks for sharing justin thank you somebody so else mine seems to be um different to that which you're describing uh, you're talking about people closing down because it wasn't accepted uh, and mine is around closing down because uh, I was alerted to things like unrestful spirits came through and got stuck and I was the conduit um, and you're know, doing doing Ouija board at school and literally having that occur but uh, I think the final there, no there was later blocks like, like Barry said in the 20s but I do remember when I was about 18 I got very upset when a friend who'd accidentally overdosed came through and clearly I was the person that uh, was making the seance work. So yeah, I, I don't have my family going, don't do that. 
I have my family going, you're doing that. Uh, and it's an unsafe situation uh, that has occurred around this. But Caroline, I would actually, I would question, uh, my curiosity is, did you then internalize the belief that when I use these gifts, I create harm? You yes. Know? Uh-huh. So in our family, we don't, we don't use these gifts because they create harm. You know, it's a... Oh, yeah, well, yeah, there was that too. Yeah, I remember my mum gave up tea leaves after she um, predicted some tragedy. Uh -huh. Which is, you know, entirely damaging to your ability to want to use the gift that you know you have. So, um, so great. Anybody else want to sh I mean, it, you know, it's a hard belief to have interjected, but we're going we're gonna to get rid of it here in a minute. Anybody oh, else have something they want to share? Yes, um, mine's more, um, there was just total non-belief in everything spiritual and, and all of this whole whole um, side of it. And I think it was, it's more a fear base. It's more like, oh, we're scared of that. So we just don't yeah. believe in it. And it's all who to guru or, you know, we just don't believe in it. So it was very much that was the, the environment I was in, you know, that's so all rubbish. How would you describe that belief? What would you say that is? Um, it feels like it was very fear-based or, you know, or that ignorance of not really knowing it and understanding it. So it was just shut down altogether. It was just, um, I don't believe in that. That's all bullshit sort of thing. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. So your family, because they were afraid of it, probably held the belief that, you know, this is hocus pocus or woo woo and um, not useful. And we don't do that because it's dangerous. Does that sound, does that resonate with you? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So one more, somebody else want to share? Yeah, I've got, yeah. Uh, I, I grew up, um, I, I grew up, uh, in Denmark and no one believed in my family about any psychic abilities and there was none, not even on the radar. And my dad used to say our children should be seen but not heard. And so it was not even to, even today, there are not really any beliefs about psychic abilities. It's not really something they believe in and it's just strange. So Jen, you actually had a belief that was, I don't have a right to speak or be seen. Yes. You know, like even below the ability to express your psychic yes capacity. exactly exactly my dad always said that so he was so in the military it's like kids should never be seen just yeah. um only be seen but not heard yeah thank you and lisa you had you were trying so hard go ahead <laughs> <laughs> that's okay um i think actually fear is quite an important issue in this because many of us might have seen things that we didn't want to see especially as children and mm -hmm. also, as Barry mentioned, late um, mid twenties, mid to late twenties, I um, also uh, so I I did deliberately deliberately shut down, but then it had to reverse. That's the question. Mm. So what it so the family uh, belief would have been about fear of accessing and using your psychic ability? Oh, not the family belief. No, um, I think family just didn't believe that there was any such thing. So okay. when I would perhaps was in England it gets dark quite early in the winter and I was coming back from the neighbours I used to be aware of something following me and things like that and I'd just be told it was rubbish. Okay so what I'm going to ask you to do Lisa is think about a family belief because this particular hidden agenda is something that would have come from your family. Now we have hidden hidden things in every one of our layers and, and maybe another one of these sessions will clear in a different layer but in this case what I'm looking for is a family imposed belief that would have been something that shut down your psychic capacity. So just think about that. Well, um, I think it, my father was probably psychic and shut it down too, you see. Okay. So mm -hmm. probably the fear from him got interjected into you. Yeah, uh, I think so. But not okay. with words. The only words I ever had was not to be ridiculous. I couldn't possibly see well, that. Well, right. Well, those would have been enough words, right? And you were psychic, so you heard what he was thinking. <laughs> so you didn't well, actually see the words. Well, that was my mother, yeah. But, yeah. 
So it came from both sides, yeah. Mm. All right. So let's, let's clear this darn thing, everybody. Um, so if everybody can really focus on the belief, did everybody write down their belief? If you, you know, in a few words, doesn't have to be a whole sentence or a paragraph, certainly. Um, so I want you, to, I want you to focus on that belief. And then what I want you to do is take your hand and make a vent from your left shoulder. So I want you to put your hand on your left shoulder and then like a sword, make a vent out into the universe, cosmos, like just like you're making a vent in your human energy structure, which is 20 feet off. And I'm going to monitor the release of the hidden agenda. I'm using my uh, dowsing rod here and we're going to release the residue whoa i'm feeling it of all of your hidden agendas that was merged in your human electromagnetic field all these years wow there's a lot going here folks and as as these hidden agendas release these hidden, these beliefs that were introjected into you you're letting go of the belief that you have to be a certain way or do certain things in order to be loved or accepted or to love or accept yourself or, or, you know, also the belief, you're letting go of the belief that, that you don't have the answers inside of you. So we're creating space in your energy structure for you to understand that you have the answers within you and that it, those are always available, that you naturally, organically have the capacity to know and hear and see things that most people don't recognize. So we don't have to turn to others for answers. You know the best way for you. And I'm still releasing. <laughs> so it's still releasing here. It's a lot of residue. You can put your arms down. All right, there it goes. And now I'm gonna bring in universal love and light at the cosmic level, because you all are so awake. And I'm going to fill the vents so you don't have a vent in your structure anymore. I'm going to harmonize your layers. And I'm going to integrate and blend. And I want you just all to imagine the possibility that by removing this hidden agenda in your energy structure, that you actually have access to expand in your awareness and in your energetic body in order to be stronger and more capable and more, have more capacity to feel your psychic ability and to use it wisely and to stand tall in the world with courage and to live through your heart of hearts knowing that you can see and feel and sense and have a knowingness that will contribute to your, in your contributions to the world. And I'm going to bring in the energies of belonging because in some way these beliefs kept you from feeling, feeling like you belonged in your family and your community. And I'm going to bring in the energy of home and hearth. And I'm going to bring in the energy of sanctuary. <sighs> Thank you, Barry. Do you want me to, I have a little bit of just a question for homework. Would you like me to share that now or later? Yeah, it'd be great. Thanks. Okay. So I want you to imagine, and I'm going to put, I'll put this in the chat. Um, I want you to notice all the ways that this hidden agenda, your belief that was interjected in you has shown up in your life. Where has it limited you in believing that you knew how to be or do things? And how did it limit your own knowing of the answers available to you through your psychic capacity? And we can, I'll put those in the chat. So notice all the ways the hidden agenda showed up in your life. Where has it limited you in believing you know how to do, be or do things? And how did it limit your knowing of the answers? 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Holly. That was amazing. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just excited because I get to do this as well. And, mm. and I recognize actually for myself as you're talking, Holly, that a lot of the stuff is my childhood. I actually had a lot of psychic ability. Mm -hmm. and I remember, I never actually told anyone. You know, there was mm. something in me that said it's not safe to tell people. So I just want to really thank you for that because that mm, was a You're really welcome. Great. It was my pleasure. Yeah. So thank you all. One. And, I, and I just think the combination of what we're both doing over the, the course of the seven weeks is really going to benefit and, and add value to what we're actually trying to achieve here. So I um, really want to acknowledge that work. And uh, I'm excited about coming back next week for the next part as well. So uh, that'd be really good. I just want to do one more statement um, that I didn't finish from the group of statements that I was doing. I've got one more that I'd like to do. And um, this is actually about being open to your psychic ability. And so I'd like uh, maybe someone who hasn't spoken. And Shane, we're going to bring you on, actually. Morning, Shane. How's the, how's the hour going for you, Shane? Yeah, it's going well. <laughs> Can you relate to the stuff that's been happening? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I really get that children should be seen and not heard. Uh, that was a frequent statement around our extended family, not just the time. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, and, and yeah, not heard, certainly not talking about anything that might be a little bit uncomfortable for other people. <laughs> um, the final statement that I've got for us today, Shane, for you is, I am open to seeing on all levels. I'll get you to say that for me, please. I am open to seeing on all levels. I am open to seeing on all levels. Yep. So this is looking at physically and being open to seeing physically because there is currently 85% of the population of people over 45 are now wearing glasses, 85%. And we're getting close now to 60% of the total population. You know, it's an epidemic in the Western world. So uh, this is also about being open to physical eyesight, which is an area that I also specialise in. But it's also being open to seeing intuitively within and open to seeing um, psychically as well. So I want us to sort of look at clearing with this statement of being open to seeing on all levels. So... It's dropping any blocks that we might have that have been stopping us from at least looking at this to start with. And I think that's a really important place to start. Um, Shane, I'm curious as to why you might have tested up. Is there any of those three areas that you think are blocked for you? Well, the, the, the physical level of vision isn't too good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I found, and, and uh, Shane was actually here when we were doing that, I was teaching the sabotage clearing course, and we we're looking at sabotage as to physical eyesight. And one of the things we came up with was our physical eyesight deteriorates when we shut down our psychic ability. And in a way, this is where this whole course has sort of come from, as sort of an extension from that process. And so the being open to see is as we develop our psychic ability, an offshoot of that can be that our physical eyesight can improve. And what we're going to do here is we're going to clear this a little bit differently as well. We're going to do some different things over the course of these seven weeks. And I just want, again, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. If you're riding a push bike, don't close your eyes. And if you're doing ironing, don't close your eyes. But other than that, you should be able to close your eyes safely. And what I'd like you to do is, I want you to imagine that you're actually able to see behind your eyes. So I just want to bring your imagination to behind your eyes. And I want you to imagine that behind your eyes, there is a cord. It's like a wire between both eyes. And this wire is not connected to your eyes. And I physically want you to imagine connecting this wire to the back of both eyes. And then it joins together and it actually goes to your pituitary, which is in the middle of your brain. And connects to your pituitary. 
And as you're doing that, it's going to support your physical eyesight, it's going to support your intuition, and it's going to support your psychic vision. So just imagine this being connected and that there's a clear flow and connection between your physical eyesight and your intuitive vision. Just allow that to settle and then just take a breath and then very gently just open your eyes again. And Shane, I'll get you to say, I'm open to seeing on all levels. I'm open to seeing on all levels. Okay, that's actually holding there, just doing that little process. Um, have you noticed a difference? Has anyone else noticed a difference just doing that really two minute process? Shane, can you pick anything up? Yeah, my, I wouldn't say I can see differently, but my eyes feel different. Yeah. And while it was happening, there was something going on in, in the sort of the, this part of my left hand. <laughs> so this is actually some of the unknown work that was done uh, by Dr. Bates. Uh, uh, who was a, a major physician uh, physician in about 100 years ago now, actually, literally wrote a book 99 years ago uh, about improving your physical eyesight. And uh, some of them, because he was a physical doctor, a lot of this information wasn't publicised. So this is actually some of the new information that's just coming out about what he, what he actually did and some of the techniques that he did as well. So well done. Okay, anyone else like to come in? Don, I'd like to bring you on if that's possible. Welcome, Don. Just need to unmute yourself. There we go. Hi. Hi. How was that process for you, Don? Well, it, it's interesting. I could have used it about, a, especially about a year and a half ago, because I've since had strabismus surgery to correct the crossing and cataract surgery to correct both my vision and the cataracts. Sure. Um, but that's my vision started to go bad really, really fast about the first grade. And uh, it was, as far as I can tell, it was um, correlated to a traumatic uh, experience that I had as a, as a smaller child. Well, yeah, yep. Um, and, and totally agree. And it's great awareness that you've had there, Don, that the connection between your physical eyesight and what was happening even in a small child, because Whenever I look at people who say, oh, my eyesight has deteriorated, especially when it's quickly, I always look at what was happening 12 months to two years prior to that occurring. That's, yeah. about, the right, that's about the right time frame. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, having the surgery and all that, you know, look, you know it's not always the, you know, my first option for people, but having it done, my suggestion for you is to look at ways now to look after your, your own eye health. Right. And there are a number of activities that can be done. It's sort of a little bit outside the scope of what we're doing here, but um, if you go to my website and my Facebook page, there, there's plenty of information on what you can do to help improve your own physical eyesight. Okay. Get right, thank you. Let me know and I can send you some information. Yeah. Great, right, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Good to meet you. Okay, anyone else? Anyone else had a situation there? Okay. Um, Holly, I just want to bring you back and I, I'm just really excited about uh, what we've been doing here today. And I just want to uh, get your sense of what the shift in the group has been. Well, I also wanted to just suggest that it, among those questions that I asked, it would be useful to think about how this, this belief that you identified today shut down your physical eyesight um, in addition to any of your psychic capacity. So, you know, our sense of knowing and seeing is not just limited to, to the psychic or intuitive, it's also related to, as Barry said, our physical eyesight. Um, so I am sensing a greater awareness and of, of how our own um, beliefs about the world are affecting our ability to be psychic and I, I do sense an energetic shift for the whole group um, and and including those who are going to be listening recording which we know time is time is an illusion um, in your ability to acknowledge your own psychic capacity which is really exciting I mean we need 
way more of us on the planet who recognize these capacities. And um, I'm excited to have, you know, so many of, of us all together who can claim these abilities. And um, this is going to be a really fun course to, you know, by the end of the seven weeks, we're all going to be out there just really using them. So um, hope you all can join us every week and uh, look forward to more. Thanks, Holly. And look, and, and I certainly agree with that. I think the progress that we're going to be making over the course of the seven weeks, my goal is that we start it with a group frequency of 45%. My intent is that we actually get that above 100% into a higher frequency for psychic vision. That would be my intent that we do over this course of the seven week process. The result of that will be that um, your physical eyesight hopefully will have some improvement. It certainly, you know, I always talk about maintaining physical eyesight even before improving. It's, it's stop our eyes deteriorating even further. So, you know, let's, let's maintain and then hopefully even improve our physical eyesight. Let's get more in touch with our own intuition. And, you know, as, as Holly said, you know, start even looking during the week as you're doing that homework exercise that she gave you is recognising your own intuitive abilities. You know, almost make it a game for yourself. Oh, gee, that's an intuitive hit. Have I done anything with this or I'm just hiding it again? Because over the course of seven weeks, the ideal would be that you become more and more aware of your own intuition and that you actually act on it. And the same with your psychic ability. And it's going to actually help with your relationships when you can become more aware of what's actually going on for the other person as well. Okay. And that doesn't necessarily mean we walk around and go, hi, everyone, I'm psychic. And, and I think that you need to do this, you know, like, that's just going to scare people off, <laughs> you know, quite frankly, you know, so, you know, use some discernment, use some subtleties in discussing this with people, but, you know, still own it at the same time. All right. Well, if we've got two minutes left, I'd just like to have a chance for maybe a couple of people just to jump on and say how today was for them. And uh, Jeremiah, I want to bring you on first because you're the first one that started the ball rolling here today for us. So, how was today for you? You need to unmute yourself, Jeremiah. And he's still not unmuted, so he hasn't been able to find the unmute button there. Unmuted yeah. now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> something happened with my computer, so it, uh, I could hear you, but I couldn't see you. Therefore, I couldn't find the unmute button. But anyway, I got it back. Yeah, that was great. Uh, and thank you to you and Holly and to the group. Um, because yeah, it, it has been a bit of a bane in my life that you know uh, that you know I don't believe that I have intuitive or uh, psychic abilities. So um, and you know it obviously it, it's there. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, I've enjoyed today and looking forward to the next six weeks. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Does anybody else want to jump online to um, just to say how today's been for them? Jane, do you have a quick comment? And Carol, and someone else just called in there, just whoever was first and then Jane. Okay, I just want to say I really enjoyed the session. Um, I'm looking forward of developing my psychic abilities more. I can hear, but I can't see. Yep. Um, and yes, yeah, so it was really awesome. And thank you so much. Now with your exercise, Barry, of the black wire connecting to the eyes and to the clan. Mm -hmm. um, for a split second, I'm sitting here in my car and I'm looking out at an advertising sign. And for a split second that I could actually read the subtitle of the advertising sign with my eye what can't really see. <laughs> and then it left again. So I wonder if this is a good exercise to repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, look, try it. You know, so here you go. Look, what, what this is doing is showing you that it is actually working. So it's giving you that belief that there is something there. And the idea is to extend that flash period where you actually see clearly to extend that further and further. So that becomes your natural point of seeing. So well done. Jane, just really quickly, we need to wind up. How was today for you? Yeah, 
Uh, it's been really great. I can feel this shift that's happening within my brain and in my awareness. And I can, I have this, I can sense my eyesight will get a lot better during the course. So it's really right. positive. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Holly. Yeah, look, I want to thank everyone. I really want to thank Holly for joining us in these seven weeks. Um, Holly's going to be part of the Vision School. And uh, so we're really excited to bring this together for you. And this is a bit of a work in progress for us. And we get the benefit <laughs> of the process of working with each other as well and, and you know getting to clear our own blocks as well we're all in this together so thank you holly and uh, thank really you barry yeah and i'm excited that we're all going to be better seers and knowers at the end of this so yay so look um the replay will be up on the vision school if you know anyone that would benefit from this let them know they can join us live for the next six weeks listen to the replay they can sign up um, at thevisionschool.org. Thanks, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you all next week. Bye, everyone. Great. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Barry. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Thank, thank you.